guys? How's it going? Matthew here. I know it's been a while since my last video. A lot of things happened during that time, which I am planning to make a video about. But today's topic is gonna be none other than Udacity's React Nano Degree. I don't know why I said that so sexually. Now, to give you a little bit of background, I did have some prior experience with React. Nothing major. I had taken Maximilian Swatch. I'm gonna butcher that name. Maximilian Schwarzmüller. 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 You know what? Let's go with Max. But I had taken Max's course on Udemy, React 16, The Complete Guide, which was amazing, by the way. Max is a great instructor. I loved his teaching style. He really took the time to dive deep into topic, explained every little detail. But anyways, this is not a review about that course. Although if you guys do want to see a review on that course, I'd be happy to share my thoughts in detail with you. So I went into this nano degree while I having been exposed to React before, and I joined the cohort that started on October 16th. Now, I know what a lot of people's criticism is when it comes to Udacity's nano degrees. They are way too expensive, and I get that. For those of you who don't know, Udacity's nano degrees start from $599 and go all the way up to $1199, and I'm talking about hundreds. The React nano degree is currently priced at $999. But enough about that info, let's get into the real questions why you guys are actually here for. So how is the nano degree, Matthew? Is it worth it? Should I invest my hard-earned money? Or should I just buy 90 courses on Udemy instead for that same amount? Whoa, slow down. Those are valid questions and I'll try to answer those as best as I can. But I do want you guys to keep in mind that I've only been enrolled for the past 19 days, I think it is. Maybe it's 20. Having said that, I've already completed four out of the five sections of the nano degree. And I've already submitted two out of the three projects required. So I think I have a pretty good idea about how this whole process is, what the whole experience feels like. Before I start giving you guys my thought, let's take a look of how the core curriculum is structured. If you guys do decide to join the nano degree, this is the screen you're gonna be greeted with. Uh, this is basically your classroom and you'll be seeing five different sections, like I said. Introduction, React Fundamentals, Career Support, React and Redux, and last but not least, React Native. You will also be presented with some extra classes, like an optional Redux project, which I'm very happy that that exists, uh, ES6, Client Server Communication, Asynchronous JavaScript, Git and GitHub. Now the extra classes are there to help you go through this nano degree, as well as solidify your knowledge, and I'm saying that because Redux Redux is definitely the hardest part of this nano degree. Redux by its nature is so verbose, and while it is a great solution because what it offers is predictable state management, it's definitely, it definitely takes some time to click. Uh, like I definitely had to look into external resources to get it, but once you get it, then that's it. Now throughout this nano degree, you're gonna be creating three main projects, and those projects are gonna be reviewed. And once you do pass the reviews, you acquire your nano degree. So the first project you're gonna be creating is MyReads, a book tracking app. It should allow the user to be able to search a book and given that book, they should be able to categorize it between want to read, currently reading, and read categories. Let me actually show you what my take was on this project. Uh, so this was my take. Basically, like I said, currently reading. So these are the books that the user would be reading, uh, want to read as well as read, um, the user should be able to switch shelves, so now this is read, uh, as well as search a book, let's search for the infamous, perfect, JavaScript and jQuery by John Deckett, so want to read, so the user is redirected, and now it's on want to read, and not only that, but it should now still show exactly want to read. This was honestly a pretty fun project to work on. I loved it. I I had a lot of fun with uh, with styling. The search terms are quite limited. That's why I'm including them here. Uh, the complete list of search terms is this. This was just a limitation from the API that was provided to us. And the cool thing is that when the user leaves the tab, it is still saved in the local storage, meaning that any changes we made, the user should still be able to see them there. That's pretty much the first project. 
Now, let's look into the second. Before I go on to React and Redux uh, career support, this was a this was a pleasant surprise. You basically submit your LinkedIn. They give you tips and advices on how to revise it in order to look professional as well as increase your chances on getting a job or being noticed by recruiters. Optimize your GitHub profile, pretty much the same logic as LinkedIn. You submit your GitHub profile and they tell you what to change, what you can do better and what you're doing great. And then here we are, the infamous React and Redux section. Uh, what was I saying? The React and Redux project. This one was a would you rather. I'm pretty sure everybody knows the concept of would you rather. I actually just submitted it about three days ago and it passed. So for this one, I use material design. I'm not, to be honest, I'm not very happy with how it turned out. So the concept is you sign in, you cannot access any of the routes without first signing in. You basically just fill out your name and a username and you go play and you're presented with everybody's questions you cannot see it until you actually go to view question and this is their avatar would you rather write javascript or write swift let's say write swift and then here are how many people voted for the first option how many people voted for the second option um this bar this progress bar is optional i just decided to include that you're supposed to be able to see the name of the user that signed in here. This is the leaderboard. And I don't, oh, there we go. This is my icon. Uh, and basically all the users that have played. Total points, which is basically the sum of the asked as well as answered. Oh, by the way, asked. You get to add a question. So would you rather, I don't know, um, write react or write angular we all know the answer to that one obviously awesome job the question was added successfully now you can see your question on this section answered is going to be the question that you've already answered and you go to the view question would you rather write react or write angular obviously no uh, write react go back and that's pretty much the second app it was, it's not that it was hard, but it definitely made me scratch my head a lot of times, especially the Redux part. That's pretty much how everything looks. Um, I, I can't really show you what the last project for this one looks like. This is most, no, this is what the React Native project is going to look like, or should look. One other thing I forgot to mention. So I was never given a link to a Slack channel Instead now, I don't think they have the Slack channel anymore. They have this student hub. Honestly, I haven't used this at all. It's a cool feature from what I can see, but why not just use Slack? I don't know. It's good. It's good that it's there for anybody that needs it. And it seems like they are pretty responsive, the mentors. Another cool thing also was uh, just Yesterday, uh, a Udacity member reached out to me. She wanted to see how I'm progressing. What do I think? It's basically kind of like a feedback. And we had kind of like a 15 minute Google Hangout call. It's pretty cool to see that they're actually willing to invest some time into you. And I can see that they care. But the real question now is, what do I think? And if I had to put it into a few words, then it would be, it's definitely the most structured online learning I've had. But is it worth the price tag? Honestly, that depends. I can't really say, no, it's not worth the price or, oh, listen, it is worth the price because something that I found very valuable is the code reviews. Are code reviews worth $999? But like I said, that depends. That depends on you want to have a community where you can ask questions and know that they can answer you. Do you want to have a mentor who you know he's going to be there when you ask him? Do you want to have someone who's going to review your code and he's going to be honest with you? Would I do it again? 
Um, to be honest, I would. I would because I I really do feel like a junior React developer. I could I could definitely pick up a project from start to finish, and I could definitely contribute to it. Whether it's with Redux, whether it's with Redux Thunk, Redux Saga, um, wh whether if it's React Native. Uh, honestly, React Native and React they don't differ that much. Well. Thanks for watching the video guys. Thanks for sticking with it till this point. Next video is gonna be on ifies. Uh, what the heck? What the heck are ifies? Thank you so much for your time. Have a great day and stay safe. See ya.